This video is brought to you by CoolStuffInc.com, where you can find cool stuff in stock. Hello, and welcome back to another day in the arena. It's me, it's CGB. Today in the arena, we are returning to a simpler, more terrifying, and quite honestly, brutal time. The time of Nexus of Fate. We are taking all the turns in standard. And I played around with a taking turns kind of mono blue deck, mono blue snow deck in the past, but this Simic take all the turns pile is certainly uh, a throwback to the days of Wilderness Reclamation, Tamiyo, and Fog. Since nothing like that is legal anymore, some would say for good reason, we had to adjust. And instead, to get deeper in the deck and somewhat fog our opponent, we have an adventure package, which Edgewall Innkeeper, Fay of Wishes, Brazen Borrower, and Lovestruck Beast. These will keep the opponent from messing with us. In fact, they pretty much take up our entire early game with these 16 cards, so that we can get to what we really really want to do and that is we want all of the turns not some of your turns all of your turns of course four copies of all runs epiphany making birds and getting extra turns is one thing but it exiles itself so it's not enough four copies of discontinuity if you've forgotten about this mythic it says as long as it's your turn this spell costs four less to cast which doesn't come up too often but it can be good against rogues end the turn if you play this on your opponent's upkeep if you play it with their spell on the stack if you play it in their combat step whenever you play discontinuity your opponent's turn ends and it goes right back to your turn so it's not quite a complete time walk style effect of taking the turn but it's close and it's close enough the opponent might get to untap their cards but they don't get to do very much else and if you let them attack they just tap them again for you it's nice and then we have four copies of teferi master of time why is he the master of time oh yeah because he takes turns the minus 10 says take two extra turns after this one and if you're taking a lot of extra turns then ticking to ferry up to get the ultimate isn't completely undoable because remember it activates on both turns and in a way this is a benefit with discontinuity because with you, what you can do is you can, on the opponent's upkeep or in response to whatever, you can activate to very Master of Time, then cast Discontinuity. So you're still ticking up on their turn, then ending their turn. Uh, but the new card in the deck, uh, aside from the, varn the Vine Glimmer Snarl, making the mana work a little harder, the new card in the deck that pairs awesomely with Teferi Master of Time is Kazmina, the Enigma Sage. And for one in a green blue, you get mostly nothing, but there is a sweet line of text that says each other planeswalker you control has the loyalty abilities of Kazmina Enigma Sage, which again are mostly nothing except for one little deal. The plus two that says scry one, you can do that with Teferi, and Teferi's plus one is good and it ticks up really fast the plus two scries instead of loots which is not great but the fact that you can gain four loyalty per turn cycle two loyalty for every turn means that you get to do the two extra turns very very quickly so that is sort of the key combo for Cosmina, the Enigma Sage here in this deck. Making the Fractal isn't very important. It comes up sometimes. The minus eight is pretty good because you can search your library for All Runs Epiphany and cast it if you want to get an extra turn out of Kazmina, but it doesn't happen very often. Really, it's all about comboing with Teferi Master of Time to hit those ultimates and take more turns because it's taking turns. Taking turns is what we do. You'll see, when we play the deck, you're going to be, I think, very impressed by how this card actually works with Teferi. And I don't like this card in a deck that can't defend it because it doesn't protect itself very well. It usually just gets attacks and dies. But we've got Lovestruck Beast and Fae of Wishes. We have big booties to stand between Kazmina and the oncharging horde and buy us the time we need to combo off. Elder Gargroth is a finisher. The fact that it can attack and draw cards uh, helps you cast more time walks, but it can also just end the game. So loving Elder Gargroth. The sideboard is what you can wish for with the Fae of Wishes. I've got a miscast for those who would cast ultimatums or other big spells. I've got an unsummon when we're under pressure. A snakeskin veil to protect an Elder Gargroth. That comes up sometimes. A shadow spear to give some lifelink to the Gargroth or the Lovestruck Beast. That can have a big effect. A negate, another counter spell. A sleep. Sometimes it's a way of taking a turn to just put all their cards to sleep and give you the time you need to set up your turn taking. And an Ugin the Spirit Dragon because Ugin. 
Today's video is dedicated to Breeze Man, and thank you very much for the support at the $9.99 tier on Patreon. If you sign up at $9.99, you will definitely get a video dedicated to you, although it's a very long queue, and you have to share with those sometimes selected by hitting the join button below. For $4.99 a month, you can support the channel as well and get that sweet Cool Kids Club membership where you get access to my decks a day early. You get ad-free Twitch VODs posted on YouTube, so you can use YouTube features like 2x Speed to enjoy those. So so some pretty sweet benefits. Please join below. Thank you for the support and thank you to Brees Manon. We are going to purchase a cosmetic in your honor. I believe there is still some rats. Yeah, it's rat day. It's rat day in the store. And I think burglar rat's the one that we actually end up using the most. So sweet cosmetic burglar rat acquired. Let's dive in. Let the turn taking nonsense begin. All right. Bay of Wishes, to Fairy Master of Time, Discontinuity Beast. You always keep the beast on the draw, even if your hand has a lot of tap lands like this one does. Ugh. All right, so I could play the Snarl now, or I can play the Pathway and play the beast and hope to top deck a land that brings the Snarl in untapped. I also might be able to stop an Omen next turn with a Discontinuity. Let's see what our opponent does here. When I see a Rogrin Triome, I don't see a Yorian though. Whoa. Whoa. What? Whoa. Our opponent's a certified maniac. Let's do both sides of Lovestruck Beast. Let's play this 1 1 and play this tap land. Go fetch the island because you need a lot of islands for discontinuity. And then next turn, we'll play the 5 5. If they're going to play things like Hall Monitor. Let's get the big blockers on the board. Careless, celebrant. What the heck? Is this like the most bizarre Winota deck ever on a god draw? Let's block the hall monitor because... Because... Opponent's going to save with savior. Okay. Weird. So we got all the blue we need now. Man, just give me another turn before you Winota so I can use Teferi. All right, curve out to four. Okay, Brazen Borrower. They might not be a Winota deck either. I just see a lot of non-humans. And I've become a little bit accustomed to getting winota <laughs> Uh, both sides of Lovestruck Beast, or we could play Teferi. Teferi is an interesting one. It can minus if they have a Winota, but if they have a Bone Crusher Giant, they can just kill Teferi. The Brazen Borrower on the Beast, what do we take away from that? I'm not sure. There's a lot of I'm not sure in this matchup because I don't know what my opponent is playing. So let's make a 5-5. Five, five. Next turn, I'm going to probably play Teferi and make another 1-1. One, one. But having blockers to defend Teferi before we start a train of discontinuity is probably the best way to set up if I'm going to stop being scared of what my opponent has. Because I really don't understand the deck. So I better, I, I should stop predicting. At some point, you should just try to kill him, right? Just try to do your game plan. Bone Crusher doesn't surprise me much. That card's a, a pretty obvious yes. Brazen. Okay, that can attack the Teferi pretty well. We have a Fey we could play. We draw another land. Alright, so... We could slam the Teferi, try to protect it for a turn. The opponent would have a pretty hard time getting to it, but we could set up even better if we wanted to with Fey of Wishes and another Lovestruck Beast and have all our blockers on the field and then try to get into that loop starting next turn. Which I guess I'm going for. It's a lot of, a lot of beef. 
There's a lot of booty between my face or and soon to be my planeswalker and your creatures. I block. I could have hall monitored that, so they want this trade, which means they probably have another Bone Crusher Giant, but I'm okay with that. Okay. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> Ooh, I should have played a land first to have the discontinuity option if they try to do something to Teferi. No harm done. It worked out, but... Hmm. If they go for a Brazen Borrower or some spell on end step, discontinuity counters it. Or we could have another 1-1. One, one. Let's go for the 1-1. One, one. Alright, two time walk ish effects on the way with a Teferi ticking up trying to get to the place where you get two extra turns. Oh no. Oh wait, we can stop it. We can phase this. We can phase this. We knew it was coming too, didn't we? Alright, you're out. So the celebrant, like. Oh, if the Celebrant did attack Teferi, Teferi would definitely die because this can deal two damage to a Planeswalker since the Celebrant attacked my face. And what what are you doing? Something weird going on. Yeah, they thought they would still get the triggers, I think. But phased out is phased out. Okay, that game, I don't know what to say. Wow, these hands. How do these hands happen? I'm so confused. <laughs> Um, okay. Okay. So does Fey of Wishes hold the opponent off enough? Or I, I would keep this with an edge wall innkeeper, but I think I just mulligan it here. And uh, that's better. That's a lot better. Any, any hand on the draw with Lovestruck Beast means you have a chance. You're not going to beat their best draws automatically, but you'll probably hold the fort against their medium draws. Season Hollow Blade. Okay, we drew something to do with two mana. Feels okay. Are we going to block? Well, let's not give the opponent the option of blocking and trading a card for this 1-1. One, one. Seems pretty bad. Boom. Well, somebody's, uh, somebody's doing it. So, do we run out Kazuma just to die? I think so. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry, girl, but, um, yeah. <laughs> you're, you're out here just to take a punch. Let's also try to scry our way into answers to this situation. What does that fetch? It can block. But we're probably playing to fairy next turn, so I don't think it really does anything. I believe our sideboard actually has an unsummon, so that's pretty good. So if we play Teferi into unsummon, we're really hoping our opponent attacks a Kazuma, doesn't add too much to the board. We're also hoping that they don't play a Redain or a Spellbinder, I guess. Huh. Tough. Uh, so how do I get back to making my decision? Okay. Um... I feel like I've got to do better. Look, there's no deck. My choice is decided. Okay, it does go to the bottom. Nice. Okay. Feels good. This is mono white. They play mono white. We hold this because of because of snarls. Get triple blue. Ah, we have triple blue in the pathway, so don't need to. Can balance mana instead.
draw? <sighs> okay. Shuffler has decided this is the way. I guess we have... I mean, it's the play we were thinking about making next turn anyway, so let's do it. See if the opponent keeps going face here or not. We need to distract them from hitting us in the face long enough to cast some All Runs Epiphanies. Speaker Gamer. And Daxos. Oh, what I give for an innkeeper. Opponent does attack the Teferi. Interesting. This lets me do this. If I phase this out. Do I block this? No. We'll, we'll, we'll go to eight. Terrifyingly low. Opponent does have lethal power already. Well, we can play the Kazuma. And then our Teferi starts ticking up double. We can also make a creature with it to block. I guess that's important, especially when we're about to all runs. And then the other two mana can cast the Fey. I can be your mentor if your mind is willing. Scry, scry. So we need another land anyway. So there it is. Minus one. Need a blocker. And need a blocker for the flyer. And need the opponent not to have another apparition, which I think is a reasonable ask. We also can get rid of our Teferi, potentially. Like, we can throw it away to phase if the opponent plays another apparition. The attack. Looks like the opponents decide that face is the place. That's not a lethal attack, though. Okay, if they're not going to lethal, we can make this block and take it. Now we're at three. Please don't play Redane. Please don't play Redain. Okay, my turn. So, plus two to Scry. Keep on top. Draw. All Since we're going to shuffle, we do this first. <sighs> All right, think, think, think. Scry? the bottom. We need to find more turns. More turns. Plus two. There we go. We must prepare for tomorrow. Attack. Can the opponent ambush this somehow? If they do, does it really hurt us? Not too badly. All runs epiphany. We're doing it. We're doing the turns. Scry. To the bottom. Scry again. Up to nine loyalty. Remember, we get double turns when it goes over ten, or we can search our library for cards and play them. What is it? Um, search your library for an instant or sorcery that shares a color. Exile it. You may cast it without paying its mana cost. So we can get another turn at a minus eight, but we get two turns for a minus ten. All right. Pass the turn. Do we do this on upkeep or in response to a card? I think... Yeah, the opponent might put something on the stack. I think we wait and see how they attack and then stop their turn. 
It gives them a card, but it taps their Hollow Blade again. They also know something's up, right? Like, they absolutely know something's up. So if all they do is attack with the Hollow Blade, then we tapped the Hollow Blade virtually, then we cast Discontinuity after activating our Planeswalkers. Also, if they put a Skyclave appar Apparition on the stack, we would definitely tap. Oh my. Oh my. Plus two. More turns, please. We're really looking for more turns. The future is not yet decided. Discontinuity. End of the turn. Even mid-combat, it just passes over to me. End the turn. Exile all spells and abilities from the stack, including this card. The player whose turn it is discards down to their maximum hand size. <laughs> Damage wears off this turn. Blah, 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 blah. The opponent doesn't want to know how it ends. All right, we've got on the play. Oh, it's kind of a bad hand. We can't expect to get to land drop four, so we have to take a mull here. Okay, we got an innkeeper hand. Nice. Nice, those don't come along every day. Let's keep and put away the pathway. So we turn one snarl, turn two fey. If you kill this innkeeper, the one time I have it on turn one with some phase of wishes, I'm gonna get salty. I'm gonna get salty. All right. Sideboard doesn't really have card draw. No ways to, like, actually get back in the game. Playing the Fae of Wishes, though, doesn't do anything anymore. Let's exile the Epiphany. We're going to have to fetch some cards with the Fae of Wishes. Just because our hand doesn't do anything now. Playing it out as a 1-4 doesn't actually achieve much. Wow. Just wow. Um, sleep lets us hit some land drops and keep setting up, so maybe? Unsummon's pretty good against that Hunted Nightmare, but not good against the Frost. Hmm. They're probably not going to power up the, the Haven, though. Yeah, we'll just grab the Unsummon. Seething. Okay, they are going to power up the Haven. Scum. All right. Just seething over here so much. So the goal is to get to Ugin. I guess we have to be an Ugin gamer. There's no other good way to do it. Also, if they have a Duress, that beats us all on its own. So yeah, we're trying to play some kind of game where we all run the Epiphany, hit another land drop, play the phase, survive that turn, hit another land drop, and then win. It's going to be tough. But it is doable because they did power up the Haven here, which lets us bounce the Nightmare. They can't recast it because they put their mana into the Haven. And they didn't get to add another threat, so that's good. So here's Epiphany. Let's see if we draw a land off the top to keep the cards flowing. We draw an Innkeeper. That might help a lot. All right. The second Edgewall Innkeeper is going to try to get us through this. There's Teferi. There's more cards. There's a Gargaroth, but no land. Uh, do we attack with the birds? Seems safe. But we are reloaded. We're only at five, though. And we're phasing a Scorpion, which is another two damage. Puts us on Virtual 3. 
The opponent is, really wants to deal with this innkeeper, though. This is where those passages thinning the deck comes back to haunt us, because we didn't hit our lands. If we had hit a land next turn and then hit a land the next turn, we'd be on Ugin. Which is really hard for them to beat, although they do have a haven, so maybe it's not... Maybe it's not what the goal should be. Maybe having a Teferi to stop the haven is a better play. Uh, I get to put a Death Touch creature, a Death Touch counter on a creature I control. So we see they play Deadweight. I'm going to put it on this Fae of Wishes because it, I want them to have to Deadweight the Fae because it doesn't quite kill it. Luris, go. Sweet. All right, let's draw some cards while we can. Another Fae. Oh my gosh, popping off, but suddenly there's no land in sight. Does this one go? I like holding back the Death Toucher. Actually, I like this. I do have another one, too. Yeah, I can't picture a world where this isn't okay, but we'll see. They found the Eidolon, so they have the Eidolon Deadweight combo now. Which means they have a card draw engine. And they pass the turn. I think we've got to get Teferi going. It can also prevent this Eidolon from drawing a lot of cards. And it puts pressure on the opponent in a different way. It's also a method of interaction, which we just don't seem to draw very many of. Do I give up on Ugin the Spirit Dragon? Or do I give up on Gargaroth? I think the Gargaroths are going to wrap up the game just fine. This looks kind of embarrassing, but I'm doing it. We're doing what we're doing, okay? More 5-5s. Five fives. Kakaw. we send this, the opponent can block with Scorpion, and then just get the Scorpion back with Luris, which is not acceptable. We could upkeep phase out Luris. I don't love it. Um, no card draw. Let's, let's prevent the card draw here. That's it? That's it? Okay, I guess they were really frustrated that they didn't get the job done. Oh, yay! When it rains innkeepers, it pours innkeepers. We're not on the play this time, though, so it's much more likely to get eliminated or heartless act than it is to get frickin' deadweighted, like the last opponent. Let's see what happens. We also got the Kazuma. This could get exciting. Our opponent has Wolf Willow Haven. Hmm. Double Innkeeper or Fey of Wishes? The Fey of Wishes, I think, actually could be extremely important. The Fey of Wishes might be necessary to go get a miscast against our opponent here who is ramping on the play. Playing Emergent Ultimatum, most likely. They buy Yorian. Okay. Let's go, big guy. If they have a Binding the Old Gods, we might see it here, backed up by blinking it with Yorian, which is very powerful. But at least we get some cards along the way. If they have Shadow's Verdict here, at least we drew some cards. Boom. Easy mode. Magic is so easy. All right, let's... Low struck Beast, both sides. At least put a clock on. Next turn, we'll probably Fey for a Miscast. Which should be just in time to stop an ultimatum. Double verdict out of their 80 card deck. You'd love to see it. It's too bad. I was really hoping that we'd have a clock on the board after when I fetched the miscast. Wow. Wow. If I stacked my deck, I would do it like this. So, can you finish it with the ultimatum? 
Orange Epiphany. How about now? Yorian. Okay, Yorian and gave value. I mean, they built a battlefield and shifted the tempo. Ah, uh, so what do we do? If we play Kazuma here, it will get killed. Let's get the Heart's Desire and the Beast and foretell this. And then next turn, if the opponent just attacks us here, we can attack them, discontinuity them, or all runs epiphany them, and move on. And the opponent's not going to do that. Clever girl. If we play the Kazuma, they might attack the Kazuma, though. If we attack here, it's most likely a double block. Otherwise, they wouldn't have done things this way. We can also wait. Like, we can pass. If the opponent puts an epiphany on the stack, we can use discontinuity as a counter spell. We need to get them to make a mistake. We need to get them to attack or do something here. And if I run this out, they'll probably attack it. And then we can, for a few turns, attack them while taking turns. But we do have the risk that they just top deck something really good here. All right. All right. Um... Scry, because we need to get the Yorian to kill it. If we minus, the bird will kill it. Uh, uh. I mean, it's extra turns, but I don't know if it's going to get there, because I don't know how we play this. But I think that the way it might work is we can get the opponent to chump with a bird. If the opponent chumps with a bird, or if they just don't kill this... Okay, dies. Let's see if they use... They don't make a Haven Wolf. All right, let's see if we can get them to chump here. There you go. Okay, the reason that's important is if we can get Teferi to where it doesn't die, we're in a really good spot. So let's go for the Epiphany. No Mystical Dispute, yay. See if we can get them to chump with another bird. Then we can play this other Teferi, or we can discontinuity to keep the pressure on. They chump again. Which means they don't have two creatures to pressure the Teferi. So let's play the Teferi. Innkeeper. It's pretty good. We might hold it because of a verdict, though. And just to have more options, like if we hit another time walk, we want to be able to keep the time walk. Wow, they top decked that. They top decked that. Cool. Cool. We gave them a turn. They took it to the freaking limit. What a scumbag. We're not dead to the Vorinclex if we phase it with Teferi, so we can put this away. The opponent resolve the Vorinclex. We phase it out. They resolve the Professor Onyx, which they can use to kill the Lovestruck Beast if they're feeling scared, but they might not do that. Let's see. They're going to dig instead. They like digging. They might hit a removal spell, so... But they don't realize how close to trouble they are. Uh, unfortunately, our Teferi can't gain counters once the Vorinclex comes back. Let's see if the Yorian kills the Teferi. Wow. The land and the binding. Weird play, though. Very weird play. What to do? so close if we attack the face 
We get our opponent to mine it, plus the Liliana, say go, play the innkeeper maybe, maybe they minus the Liliana. If we do that, we can discontinuity in response. They chump the beast. It's pretty good for us too. Coward. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Down to six. Edgewall innkeeper. In the turn. If they draw a mystical dispute, I'm going to cry. I mean, they have... They've really done it so far this game. Do what you gotta do. What a top deck, but we're shutting it down. They gain no life from the Magecraft trigger. We're shutting it down, baby. Man, they're not quite dead. They're so close to dead, but they're not quite dead. Let's see if we can draw another bounce spell to finish this. No, we cannot. Come on. Come on. Just die. <laughs> Two lands and a triome that they have to cycle. Yes. Come on, miss. Good game. Dude, I, I earned it. <laughs> I freaking earned it. All right, nice. Almost really nice. And we are back for the post-game wrap-up, and let's check the stats powered by MTGA Assistant, a free download in the description that also supports the channel. And the stats have me on the draw four times, on the play twice, with five wins and one loss in Mythic, 83% win rate. That's a performer. That's what we look for in our superstars. I, I, I had a pretty good run. I definitely had a few tough moments, but for the most part, very good luck. So I like it, but this deck could be a ladder contender, and especially when the opponent doesn't know around turn four or five that they're never going to get another turn, this deck can be very frustrating to play against. Rogues, I think, is the matchup that I just... I, I just can't find a good escape card to flip that matchup. I think I'd have to run Saltai to have access to like Pelucranos to really be able to do something there. So Rogues is the matchup where I just feel like I don't have it. Like I don't have a good answer to it. So that's the thing you got to keep in mind. Now, Rogues is trending down. Uh, another useful, very, very useful thing on MTGA Assistant is that you can check the meta of other people who use the device. And Rogues is trending way down 5.41 percent of the meta in best of one according to this boros has overtaken it in two different forms mono white sultai red and all of these i think are reasonable matchups for the deck this is the one i don't like at five percent of the meta that should be fine but you know how it is you know how it is as soon as you play against rogues and you know you have a bad matchup against rogues you just don't want to play anymore so it depends on how hard it punches you in the feels whether or not you really 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 want to roll with the demir uh with this pile but i do think it's a good deck i think the biggest problem for the deck is it's mythic tribal like one two three four five six ten fourteen eighteen twenty two mythics not counting the sideboard twenty three Cheeky 23. 23 Mythics? Yeah. Um, whale. We'll just call the deck Whales. Whales Unanimous. So uh, proceed at your own risk because uh, it definitely doesn't like the card Mystical Dispute either. So a uh, quick note for those of you who stayed till the end because this mostly affects you and you may have skipped it on the other video where I talked about this because it was historic. If you see a shorter video from me, it is because I plan to release two videos that day. Uh, a lot of people want more content, especially in the historic and brawl space, but I don't magically have more time to produce it. But I do want to at least 
experiment with providing multiple videos a day and hitting multiple decks and different styles of content for uh, other viewers who have been with me a long time. But as many people often do, they either when standard gets stale, they do one of two things. They move on to another game or they invest in another format. And for those investing in another format, I'd like you to stick with me. And thank you, everybody, for who sticks with me, uh, especially those like there are people who watch this that don't play the games. That's crazy. Um, but yeah, I want to try giving options because as much as there are other content creators trying to fill that space, I, I get it. Um, I, I struggle to find the ones that I really enjoy watching that upload consistently, and I would like to also provide that. But it involves a lot more of the work I don't like in video and content creation. I have to do a lot more ed I have to do a lot more figuring out titles and descriptions and setting up uploads and settings and like scheduling what date things come out and I like playing the games a lot more so doubling that work isn't very exciting and it takes up a lot more time than you guys probably will realize you don't have to realize it's my job it's totally fair um the other thing about it that's a little bit strange is now I have to dig into my watch time because that thing takes more time. I have to make shorter videos and making shorter videos seems to make sense because only about 40 to 30% of people stay after about 15 minutes. Most people only watch the video through the first game, maybe game and a half. And a lot of them skip the intro as well. So if I make like a video that's 20 to 30 minutes that shows primarily what people want, that will satisfy most of the audience. But I know that you guys who always stay till the end and are very loyal might feel a little bit cheated by shorter videos. So when you see a shorter video in your feed, please try to understand that there should be another video being released the same day. So you should still get around an hour of CGB content. We are just also going to try spreading it out over multiple types of decks and maybe over multiple formats to give people another taste of what they will enjoy. So I hope that that works for people. If it does, it will go back to the old way. I pay attention to analytics. You're welcome to leave a comment with your opinion. Just know that as much as I appreciate all your opinions and comments, I mostly only pay attention to analytics because everybody's going to say what they want and what they believe they want. But what is the true guiding light if you want to be a successful content creator is what people tell you they want it's what they actually do and analytics represent behavior people tell me what they want me to do all the time but i have learned that what they actually want me to do is surprise them with something they didn't know they wanted so i'm going to keep trying to do that why do i leave this explanation because it mostly affects you the coolest ones who stay till the end and i want you to feel like you're at least in the know of what i'm thinking about on that note, it is the middle of the month. I'm supposed to remind many of you to go renew Twitch Prime, so please do if that is a thing you want to do. If you have an Amazon Prime subscription in your household, you can support me for free in a way that would normally cost money by subscribing with Twitch Prime uh, over on Twitch. So how to put that together, there's a link in the description to a Dusty Porter video who does a great job explaining how those things work together. And uh, if you've done it before, all you have to do is click over there and hit uh, renew and you support the channel for yet another, another month. And thank you uh, to the hundreds of you who do that. You guys are awesome. I appreciate it. It means a lot to me. It makes a big difference in my life. And thank you for watching this video. As always, I will see you in the next video. You're cool.